Hello, everyone. Uh, thank you for joining today's session. Uh, my name is Sakshi, and I am a part of the Nulcon team. Uh, for those of you uh, who are new uh, over here, Nulcon Conference is a unique platform for security enthusiasts and professionals to showcase their research and technology to the community. Uh, being established in India since 2010, we are now expanding Nulcon to Berlin, where we will be discussing information security in detail among the top industry experts and the tech community. We are also happy to let you know that we have announced our Nulcon Security Trainings Berlin edition, which will happen from 5th to 7th April. For more information, you can visit our website. Uh, also, in this virtual environment, we keep conducting webinars, workshop trainings, resume clinics, and more to engage and benefit our community. So coming to our today's speaker, we have with us Sakaldeep Yadav and Suman Tiwari. Sakaldeep is currently working as a security architect at uh, Avanid Ireland. I'm so sorry if I mispronounced that. Uh, he has been working with Microsoft ecosystem for more than 12 years. Also, he has been awarded Microsoft v, uh, MVP since 2017. Uh, our second speaker for today is Suman Tiwari, who is a cybersecurity expert and also a certified Scrum master. He holds extensive hands-on experience in auditing internet banking applications, code banking applications, and web applications. So on behalf of all of us, I would like to welcome Sakaldeep and Suman. But before we go ahead, a few instructions for the audience. Uh, our workshop duration is about 60 minutes, and at the end, we will have a question answer session. So you all can ask your questions using the chat option uh, during or after the talk. And secondly, I would request you all to keep your mic on mute during the session so there is no disturbance in the background. And without any further delay, I request our speakers to take charge of the session. Thank you. Thank you, Shaksi. Uh, thank you, Saksi. Uh, so I am Suman Tiwari. Uh, this is a joint session. Uh, workshop is conducted by Sakaldeep and me. Uh, the topic that we are going to cover is quiet cloud security posture management and threat protection. Uh, these are all the agendas. So we'll be discussing CSPM in details. We'll also discuss what is threat protection uh, or cloud workload protection. These two terms are quite similar and they refer to threat protection only. Uh, we'll also discuss how CSPM and CWP tool works. Uh, then we'll do a demo using Microsoft Defender for Cloud Tool. At end, we'll wait for a Q&A session and we'll take, take up the questions. Okay, so uh, what is cloud security posture management? So this is a new set of tool, IT tools, which is used to uh, secure your cloud resources, see that uh, is there some security misconfiguration in the cloud, and it supports automations, and there are a couple of other added features that we'll be discussing as we move ahead. Uh, so it is normally identifies the misconfiguration in the cloud resources. So as you can read here, Cloud security posture management is a market segment for IT security tools that are designed to identify misconfiguration issues and compliance risk in the cloud. It is, just a second. Okay, so it continuously monitor your cloud infrastructure. If you go in past the traditional way, we used to, if you are using Nessus, we used to run a scan by putting IP host name, even such tool supports is scanning using MAC address. Okay, so we cannot say it's continuously you are scanning and uh, some changes are done, you'll get uh, the alerts at the real time. But when you use tools like CSPM, uh, you'll get a live alert. It's quite near to the uh, real world, uh, real time. So that is the main difference if we compare with the traditional assessment. Another major advantages we have is it supports automation. So it works on robotic process automation. And uh, the moment uh, the flaws are reported, it can automatically uh, fix it. Again, it depends from vendor to vendor. Few vendors are fully supported. A few are not supporting fully automated features. We'll discuss that also as we move ahead. 
CSPM tool work by examining and comparing cloud environment against a defined set of best practices and rules. Uh, can I minimize this? I'm seeing your, yeah, great, sorry. Okay. Okay, so cloud security posture management helps to understand the current security postures and let us know if there is some room for improvement so that we can do the fixes. So basically we have divided into two portions. One is continuous assessment, another is uh, recommendation part. So tool will do the continuous assessment. It will let you know the score, where we stand and uh, what is your current situation. So normally it gives you some score. Again, when we'll give demo, we'll get to know how score is calculated, how tool reports it, and how you can fix and improve your scores. So it will let you know uh, the asset inventory, uh, warranty assessment, regulatory compliance, where you're compliant or not, file, file integrity monitoring, and a couple of other checks are there in continuous assessment part. Once you know where you stand, uh, you can uh, do the uh, fixes based on the recommendation given by CSPM tool. Either you can do the changes or tool itself can automate and do the fixes for you. So hardening guidelines, everything is provided. Uh, for example, let's say we have not implemented MFA. So it will flag that MFA is not implemented. Uh, suppose we have a VM. So uh, we have concept like just in time VM access. So, so RDP is enabled. If you keep a VM up with RD enabled for a very long period of time, there will be lots and lots of uh, hit happening for a brute force attack. So we have a concept like just in time access. Uh, the moment your VM is at, uh, up, uh, RDP is enabled and then it will be down and uh, nobody will be able to do a brute force attack. We can do whitelist of an application that is called application, adaptive application control. Uh, we have adaptive network hardening. Uh, that is nothing but a port binding, uh, port hardening, this kind of things. Again, we'll discuss all these topics as we move ahead. Uh, coming to the capabilities of a CSPM tool. So be it uh, AWS, GCP, uh, Microsoft, all cloud platforms, uh, they have CSPM capabilities. Uh, for example, AWS has uh, AWS Security Hub. Uh, GCP has Security Command Center. Microsoft Azure has Defender for Cloud. Uh, they are capable of detecting and remediating cloud misconfiguration. Uh, maintain security best practices for different cloud configuration and services. Map your current configuration to security control frameworks or regulatory standards. Uh, you can also do threat warranty management. So these are the bare minimum capabilities given by any uh, CSPM tool. Security policy is a rule about specific security conditions that we want to control. Uh, you can take example of uh, VM disks should be encrypted. So if that is part of our policy, whatever checks we want, we can put that check and uh, tool will take care of it. So uh, we have built in default policy. For example, Azure has Azure security benchmark. Okay, uh, you can modify the policy based on your requirement. So all these tool supports your own custom uh, policy customization. Apart from that, uh, you can also do regulatory compliance and standard checks by adding those checks to a policy. For example, if you want to be a GDPR compliant, so you can add those checks and tool will let you know whether you are compliant or not. Uh, this is a typical example of uh, how CSPM uh, tool works. So this is taken by Azure. Uh, so here you can see this, these are the controls. This is the score. This is your current score. And if you do the fixes, what percentage your score will go high. So here, if you see here, I'll take a few examples and uh, we'll move ahead. Here it is secure management ports. Our score is quite good. There are minor changes that we need to do. Uh, here, we can click here, drop down will come. And based on the recommendation, we can do the changes and increase our score. Uh, let's pick this one, manage access and permission. So here our posture is very bad. Our score is zero, max score is four. So again, we can click here. Uh, while giving demo, we'll uh, cover that part also. So whatever recommendations is coming, the moment we do all those fixes, our score will go up by plus 8%. Um, 
So same encrypt data in transit. Here we are in very good position. We have uh, so these all thing will cover when we'll give demo. So I'm moving ahead. How CF CSPM collects logs? So there are two ways to collect logs. Uh, for some cloud components, no agents are required. Most of these agents, uh, these, these components are managed by cloud platform only. For example, pass services, data services, and network. Uh, uh, for few native uh, resources, we need agent to get logs. For example, if you are using a virtual machine. So uh, we'll install agent and agent will pull all the logs and that log will go to CSPM tool for analyzing. So we need agent for uh, IS, Kubernetes clusters and on-prem servers. No agent is required for network, data services, and uh, pass services. Uh, till now, whatever we discussed, uh, that was passive in nature. Uh, now we are discussing about threat protection, which is more active in nature. So uh, what is threat protection? Threat protection is often known as uh, cloud workload protection. Uh, it protects your cloud resources using advanced and intelligent protections and generate security alerts in case of attack or some malicious activity. If you see this diagram, how it works, it monitors live traffic, collect logs and analyze the data for threats and present the same in a dashboard. How it analyzes the data? It analyzes the data based on the threat intelligence, behavior analysis and anomaly detection. Once threat is uh, like alert is generated, you have two options. You can send the logs to SIM tool and let SOC handle it. That is option one. Or you can automate your workflow and define the rule that if some kind of alert happens, take this step. So we have both options based on the policy organization is following. Uh, one can go with uh, that option. For example, let's say there is a denial of service attack happening. So you can automate a workflow with, uh, workflow with a rule like uh, uh, restrict the IP or even shut down a system where a DDoS attack is happening. So based on the rules that are mentioned there, our workflow will work. And again, there is no uh, human intervention. Based on the rules, everything is automated and tool itself is taking care of everything. CSPM and CWP tools also helps to streamline the process of meeting regulatory compliance requirement like PCI DSA, CIS Benchmark, NIST. These are the few names. There are a couple of more uh, compliance and regulatory like HIPAA, FIPS, uh, GDPR. So it supports all major uh, compliance. What are the cloud resources? So this, these are not the huge list. They're just, just to give an example, network, virtual machine, web service, Kubernetes, container, database, these are few of the example of the cloud resources. One of the popular CSM, CSPM tool and CWP tool is Microsoft Defender for Cloud. So this tool take care of CSPM as well as CWP. Uh, this is a typical dashboard, how it looks. When we'll do a demo, these all thing will be covered in a demo. Uh, over to you, Sakaldeep. Mm, thank you, Suman. Can you please stop sharing so I can share? Perfect. Uh, can you confirm you can see my screen? Uh, yes, Sakaldeep, I can. Perfect. Perfect, yeah. So hello, everyone. So this is the Mm, Azure portals, we are using the Azure uh, tools for this demo. So we have tool called here, Microsoft Defender for Cloud. So this is the CSPM and the CWP tools. So I can see some question in the chart. So what is, so uh, cloud security posture management and the cloud workload protection are the tool for the cloud security. So I will start from the inventory here. So for this particular demo, I, I have the 84 resources and these are, you can see different kind of resources like it's a virtual machine, SQL server, key vault, app service, and so on. So by purpose, I have done some kind of misconfiguration. You can see here, so many red here. 
so we can see how it works. So let's just start from the first thing, the secure. So someone to talk about like this tool give, the CSPM tool gives two things. One, the secure score, like what you can situation now, and next in the recommendation, how to improve that. So let's go for the secure score first. So in this my environment, we can see my secure score is at 38%. That is not good. At least it should be above 70 or 80. And, and, and I have different kind of subscription. Subscription is like the, <coughs> sorry, uh, set of environment. So I can see a few subscription has very bad. A few is like even the below average. So these are the things. So now we know like uh, our cloud configuration, cloud resources are not up to mark. And so there could be many reasons. So, so this tool has detected and giving the SQL score. Now let's see the recommendation thing. So how to fix that. So these are the controls. So these are the control that I was looking for. And in the, almost all the control, we are very bad. So let's take an example. So first recommendation is saying enable the MFA. Like earlier we have, uh, if you talk about the security, the like before cloud, then like if you harden everything, harden your network, then you are secure. But in the cloud, like network is not the, like the first security boundary. This is the ident identity because we are accessing the resources from anywhere based on the identity and the RVAC thing. So as per this con current configuration, this, this tool, Defender for Cloud tool has uh, uh, find that I have some misconfiguration here. So let's, so I have the subscription. In this subscription, we can see. So in this particular subscription, we have three accounts and that three account has MFA not enabled. So we are at a, at a high risk because if anyone like got my password in, by in, in, any attack technique, then they can simply log into this Azure portal and they can do whatever damage they want to do. So. So this is the one configuration, and even it's like giving the, the a description here and what to how, how to remediate this. So these are the steps. So if you follow this step, it will going to fix this issue. And almost all are unhealthy, and one are not applicable. Okay. So this is the first recommendation. Let's talk about uh, the other recommendations. So other is saying secure port management. Yeah. So uh, you can see here, uh, we have few virtual machines and few virtual machines have the, like the port not securely um, configured. So let's see what that's. So go there and again, it's saying the description. So it's a lot in the high risk because uh, due to that misconfiguration, and these are the steps we have to follow. So let's, and these are the resources. So like I have a four VM that have in the high risk now, only one is in the healthy situation. So let's, I will look for one, this VM, the network. So now it's, we can see, we have enabled the RDP uh, 3389 for any to any. So it means like, hi, this, why should I enable any to any? It means any, anyone can try to log in, uh, anyone can do the brute force. Same goes for the second, second rule. The 443 is enabled for like any to any. So this is of course the misconfiguration thing, misconfiguration. So even like any cloud engineer, like who has not much knowledge or maybe they have, configure this by mistake. This defender for cloud tool has detected that this is the misconfiguration and, and this should be fixed. So let's talk about some other, uh, other control. So this is about the TVM, so the threat probability assessment. So as per this tool, I have the seven VMs and four VM is missing the, these vulnerabilities and the, and vulnerability should be remediated means there's no, no anyone VM. So if you go inside again, this. And we, and we can see like the, all these four VMs have the issues. Again, let's go for any, this VM. I don't know. So soon so also talk about some kind of like the automated fix. So like this tool is giving us saying like, okay, so this is the problem. This VM um, has not the like TBM installed. So simply click on, I, suppose I want to fix on that PC01, click and fix. So if you fix that is giving an option. So in the Azure uh, world, like they have multiple options. So one with like Defender for the endpoint, that, that the TBM solution we can install. You, we also support the colleagues. We also support your the third party, like other Rapid7 and other things. 
So we have multiple option. It's depend on the licensing things. We don't want to go licensing things, but but these two are free here. So even you can go for the college or you can go for the depend of your endpoint. You can see here in, included means nothing. We have don't have to pay extra. Both have included here. So once we proceed that, so suppose just do that, fix one. So what will happen in the background that this TVM solution will be installed in this PC and they will. Uh, they will go, go the, all the scanning inside the VMs, inside the server, and they will give all the findings, and then we have to take actions. And, and these activities uh, will be like, uh, suppose right now we have like seven VMs, you can see. Suppose tomorrow I, I created one more, more VM, eight, VM number eight. So this will be automatically uh, scanned as well. So this tool like uh, do the continuous assessment and almost all in the real time, not real, but near real time and it, it will flag here so these are the like you can see all these controls are being monitored so these are the controls this is from the like the so we also talk about the like the policy so from where we are getting all this so all these are defined in the policy uh, so there's like the default policy and the custom one and the like regulatory compliance so it's, it's almost all coming from the uh, default policy so let's see, take some example here, like Defender for Endpoint Protection. So this is the antivirus, anti-malware solution. Suppose in your organization, you are, you are using like McAfee or some other antivirus, you don't want to this. So what this tool will do, this tool will find that that VMs has not the antivirus installed, but we know they are, it's antivirus because they are, we are running the McAfee. So what we can do, we can also disable that. So for example, I don't want to look for that control. So you can do all these things. So I'm going to now look how all these things are coming and how to modify all this configuration. And if you, anyone, anyone want, we can talk more about any specific thing if you want, any control. Or let, let's talk about one more control. For example, this one, enable encryption at rest. So it means uh, it's uh, giving for the like the VMs and SQL database. So in the case of VMs, all the VM disks should be encrypted and that will be recommendation in the SQL and the SQL database should be encrypted also. So let's have a look for the VM. So for the VM it's saying the virtual machine should be encrypted all the disk, including the temp disk, cache and the other, other disk as well. And this is the description and this is the step to remediate. So for that you have to use the uh, encryption instruction and all VMs are like uh, unencrypted. Let's take example again here go to the disk and then go to the setting yeah so we can see here like it's not encrypted if you want to encrypt then you want to encrypt the os that disk or the both so let's go for the os then we have so when you do the encryption we have to store the key somewhere so for that you use the service called key vault in the azure so and we have to provide all this information and after that the key will be uh, stored in the key vault and the disk will be encrypted. So again, this is the misconfiguration. It's not secure because what's the risk here? So the disk is not encrypted. If, if anyone got logged into the, the Azure portal and they download this BSD file and they, then they can like simply attach this BSD file to the, any hypervisor and they can, or maybe the Hyper-V and they can see the data. So it should be encrypted. One more thing I want to here discuss. We can see like uh, encryption is there with the PMK. So PMK is the platform manager key. So by default in Azure, all the disks are encrypted, but encrypted by platform is by Microsoft, by Azure. So we don't have control over the key. So what key they are using, we don't know. So again, also this is not the very good practice. So generally what the companies do, they use their own key to encrypt. So this is the recommendation. This encryption there, of course, but not by uh, by the customer, not by the user. So let's go back to the recommendation again here. So, and you can see all this configuration. So now let's talk how to like modify all this policy. For example, I don't want this. I don't want to see this because we're using McAfee. So for that, so till now we have covered two things, the security score, we are bad and how to improve that. So these are the things to improve. So if you go to the environment setting, and then I will choose a specific uh, subscription, maybe this one, and then go to the security policies. And then we can see I have applied the default policy that is the Azure security benchmark. We can also add other as well. There are so many. So what the, the, what the rules are there inside this policy? 
and then go to the next. Just give a few seconds to load. Come on, yeah. So these are the policies. So we are looking for the like in point protection. So let me find in point protection. Yeah. So this is the rule. Like in point, uh, in point protection should be installed on the virtual machines, but we don't want. So simply, what we do, we come here and disable it, and apply. So up, so after this, this tool is not going to look for the defender for uh, sorry uh, in in point protection in the VMs. So this is how we control the rules. Uh, and so we can disable, enable anything from here that from the default one. And if you want to create your own custom rule, then you can also do using the Azure policy. So Azure policy is a different service and that is used for the creating all the policies. And coming back here. So from where we can like uh, configure the policies. Other things soon also talk about like the agent. So for that, uh, we can go to the auto provisioning. So we can see here, like we, uh, we have the control for the VM. So for the, okay, so the name of agent is the log analytics agent and that collect all the logs. And for VM, we have the control. So if, if you want to like uh, do the scanning for the vulnerabilities in the VMs, of course, uh, enable that. If you don't want to disable that. So we have the control here, but we can't see here the like network the SQL service or the network, or even the like web app, because they are maybe being controlled by the Azure, the platform. But for this kind of resources, we have control. If you want to enable, enable it. If you don't want, we don't enable it. Okay, again, again, coming back to here, the recommendation. So, uh, so how like we are getting this recommendation, we can modify that. So, and once you like uh, fix all this recommendation, you, our security score will be improved. Other thing is like the regulatory compliance. So there are many regulatory compliance. So I have taken a few here, like Azure Security Benchmark, PCP, CI, DSS. So uh, let it load. So we can see here, as per the, uh, for the PCI DSS, my uh, cloud resources are very bad position. Almost everything is it nothing good for the azure security benchmark yeah only two items two controls are the green otherwise it is so how to fix so, so these are the recommendation and whenever we fix almost all these recommendation from here all really become greens then almost we are having all so many greens here as well if something else we can configure from here so for example let's uh, look for this one why is saying red so network security and then this one Okay, so it's saying subnets should be associated with the NSG in, in the network. So you, you many of you already know, like uh, Azure has the like VNet, VNet has the subnet, a subnet has the like NSG, network security group is a kind of firewall rule. So as per the best practice, all the subnet must have the, some kind of firewall rule there, what to allow, what to not allow. But this uh, tool has found there is a four, four subnet that has no firewall rules. It means it's like allowed everything. So it's a big risk. So let's see here. Okay, so these are the like four subnets. Uh, okay, let's go for this one. So this is the subnet and we can see uh, NSG. Yeah, so no NSG has, has like applied here. It means anyone can do anything. So we can see here like what's the point I'm trying to make here. This tool is like identifying all the misconfiguration as per the best practice, like as per the PCI, as per the Azure security benchmark. So all this should be fixed, but it's, we are green here, but we are not green here. So this tool is like capable of doing all these things. And one more thing, this tool is not only working for the cloud resources, it's also work for the like the on-prem server. So suppose for you have the on-prem server, then we have to install the agent manually there. And after that, they start collecting log for that on-prem server and we'll get the same features for that server as well. And it's also support for third-party cloud as well. So let's not talk about that, but it's also support. So this is the three things, the security score, uh, regulatory compliance and the recommendation are like the security cloud posture management. So it's giving us the visibility. So what your current situation and what we can do to improve that. Now let's talk about the other thing. Other thing is like the, Threat protection or the cloud workload protection, and for that we have uh, 
this one rockler protection and they have very few advanced features uh, the tvm just in time access all these thing sql assessment fame all the things and, but before that i want to talk, uh, talk about the security alert so uh, in the alert uh, the, this tool has found some kind of suspicious activities and they've alerted us so let's take example of this one this alert view the few alert so there is a one server the, the, the name is of this server and uh, this activity happened on that date and attacker ip so someone from that ip has tried to log in to this um, server in the rdp session and using these different accounts you can see like they have tried like almost so many accounts and um, it was failed but okay so 30 yeah 35 times they have tried to log into the server using all these uh, different accounts so this the threat protection capability of this tool detected so if someone tried to attack your uh, virtual machines and i can uh, and this is the host name that got attacked so what to do now so to take action so these are the risks they are saying so like enforce the use of the pa strong password and all the things you do all the things and also want if you want to prevent attack do this action you can also like trigger the workflow that we should talk about so suppose we know the like this is the ip from where getting attacks so what you can do simply simply we can like block that ip so that you can do from here from the uh, workload sorry uh, workflow and we can also suspend this alert so when this is used suppose for example you are doing some kind of testing uh, so you know like this attack is doing by us then we can simply suppress that alert so these are the action we can take so this is the threat protection so this tool is like collecting already collecting all the logs um, uh, traffic from all the cloud resources and after that uh, they analyze that and give the alerts so let's to take one more example uh, this first one so i have uh, the sql service yeah uh, yeah so we have the sql database and again someone has uh, logged into this um, database using this ip and this is the host name of this uh, computer these are the user account and, and these are the things let's take another example client one yes pre attack executions okay, let's take this one again we can see that we have the like other virtual machines that again the uh, attacker from this ip has tried to uh, log in the different account and have the does so this is the threat protection and there is also one other this one the interesting one so this is the uh, adaptive application control policy so what this will do uh, this particular feature so this feature will like uh, white list all the applications or services that are running in the particular vms so suppose we have a, do the, some kind of white listing we want only want to run all this application not nothing apart from that so if some changes happen that will detect it's detected like this changes has happened this this computer and this is the risk so so what we'll do we'll go there and review if, the, if this changes had done by the ourselves or by someone else and we can take the actions so this is the threat protection so we can see like our all the resources are being protected and if anything malicious happens they are uh, giving the triggers so this is the threat protection and uh, now we'll go for the here workload protection so i want to talk about few item here so which one let's talk about PIM. okay so what is PIM? so PIM is like the file integrity monitoring that will detect all the changes in your vm so this is the one of the requirement of pci dss so like like if you are the financial organization then you must comply with the PIM. it means if anything happen in your your servers like the file changes registry changes or service changes it must be notified so I think sorry, I don't I don't have any VM here. 
Okay, let's go for this. I have one server here. Okay. So this is the server uh, demo VM, and we can see in, in this particular VMs the this service has enabled, and we are seeing seeing twenty five changes has happened. So what are the changes here? So if you click on this, so some registry changes happened in this VM. So before value this one, after value this one. So all this value has deleted. So we have to go and, and investigate that. Okay, and we can one more thing we can do simply so go to the VM and now log analytics will trigger and it will give also the all the changes. So what changes are happening? So like some restrict are removed, added by whom we can go inside and you can look for everything. So this is a theme. So like that, uh, we can also enable some other advanced features. So we, I think we're not going to cover all the things, but at least we are giving the idea of how these uh, tools work. So this tool, again, coming back to the, our uh, initial uh, topic, it's give the visibility of your security postures and it also protect you. So what's time now? Okay. Okay, uh, one more thing. So about the workload protection, sorry, the workflow. So for example, uh, something happened uh, and we want to automate that uh, scenario. So we come here and I have one workflow uh, defined here. And that is for the like the block. Yeah, the SQL brute force. For example, uh, someone is trying to brute force our SQL server. And, and, and what we want, if uh, someone uh, is trying to the brute force, then just uh, find that IP address and block that IP address. So, and that can be do automatically. So we have done here, so this is a workflow. And, and the, in the background of the workflow, the logic app works. So again, the Azure logic app is just the kind of service that do the workflow automation. So I want to show that as well. So go to the logic app. And it was yeah, SQL brute force blocking. Edit. So like it has like all the all the processor, the workflow. So what we're doing, we are if we get any alert on the security center. Okay, so old name is the security center, the new name is Defender for Cloud. So here is the old name. So if any, we get any alert, then we find the IP address of attacker. So it will find the IP address of attacker. And then what we'll do, that put that IP in the block list for the uh, NSG, NSG, the, the firewall rules. And so we, we'll, all the steps are here. And, and at the last, we'll do other things and then we can, and the new rule will be created. So how the, this workflow happened and the attacker IP will be blocked automatically. We don't have to take any actions. So th this is the workflow automation in the case of, sorry, in the case of attack. So you can also configure that. There are a few more items uh, they want to cover. So let's go to again environment setting, go to the subscription. So Defender for Cloud has a, like two plan. One is the like free, so you can say enhanced feature off and the Defender for Cloud on. So this one is free, but this has only two capabilities, secure escort and the continuous assessment. Like still you are uh, getting the visibility and, and the recommendation uh, for this one. But for the paid one, we, we are getting so many advanced features. And, but for that, we have to pay here. So there are some kind of like for the, for the VM, four servers. So per server, 15 USD per month. So I have a four server, means I have to pay 100 USD per month and, and, and so on. So still, if you are not want to pay for this service, if simply you can enable that one, still you are getting the visibility and the secure scores. And we talk about the auto provisioning already, then we can also notify. So whenever the alerts come here, we can notify like send this alert to this particular email address or somewhere. And then the integration, we can also send the, the 
alert or the recommendation to the other tools like the defender for endpoints so on we talk about that we also talk about the uh, security policies okay so i think we have covered uh, pretty much so maybe we are happy to take the questions All right. Uh, you're done with the demo, right? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Thank you so much, Sakaldeep and Suman, for this amazing informative session. And I am sure that our participants uh, must have found some knowledgeable inputs. So, guys, if you have any questions, you can drop it in the chat box. Yeah, so this is one question what is CWP? So, CWP is like the cloud broker protection. So it's a, like a set of tool, the concept that include in the tool that will protect you, your all the cloud workload. And we can see like uh, when someone is trying to attack my VMs, I got the alert. So that is the CWP. And the cloud security posture management is like it's the tool that you give the visibility. So you can see here the, the tool was giving the security score that was 38%. And it also was giving the recommendation. So these are the controls I have misconfigured. And if you configure that well, you will, you will get the security score increase. So this is the tool and, and the Defender for Cloud is the tool that includes this both concepts. So you can see these are the two concepts uh, and that comes under the many cl cloud provider tools. Recording, okay, announcement. Okay, how is the severity rating done? And are the security policy and benchmark taken from the uh, framework and standard? Yeah. So. We already talked about there are so many different types of security policies. One is the like the default policy that every cloud provider given by default. For example, in the, in the case of Azure, the Azure security benchmark, they have their one security benchmark that is very similar to CIS benchmark. That is default one. If you want, of course, you can also use the PCI DSS, ISO, and other, yes. And... Uh, uh, I have a question. Uh, which yeah. are the best automated CSMP tools available at the moment? Okay, yeah. So this is a very tough question because every cloud provider say we are the best. Like Azure says we are the best, AWS says we are the best, and the other. So what I can say is, suppose you have the your resource in the Azure, then go for the Azure tool. If you have your resource in the like AWS, go for the AWS because they support native. So even like Microsoft Azure said, uh, we support the Azure resources as well as the third party cloud resources like AWS and GCP. But of course, I think for the AWS uh, resources, the workload, AWS tool will be the best. Okay. Uh, we also have a question from Tej. What is the CIS benchmark? Is it necessary to learn? Suman, can you cover that? Uh, it's a standard, so you don't have to, well, uh, like, um, you get to know whether you are compliant as per CIS benchmark or not. Yeah, so CIS yes, benchmark is like set of a standard uh, for the security. So it's defined a set of rules like this should be done, that should not be done. And I don't think... Uh, it's, it's, it's covered more of a configuration thing and been for, yeah. since uh, almost a decade, more than a decade, I believe. Yeah, I, I, I even almost all tools are like uh, know this uh, benchmark and they already they have the, their repository. And and if you enable that CIS benchmark, uh, the tool will uh, compare your current configuration with the CIS benchmark configuration. It will give you the, the like information or the finding that you are not comp uh, compliant with the CIS benchmark. And how it's necessary to learn? I think no. If, if you are using the tool, then to, tool will do all work for you. But if you are auditor, then of course you should know all this thing. Okay. Uh, we have another question from Jay Mandi. Uh, okay. How to go for integration when we have resources in AWS and Azure? Uh, mm -hmm. Anything on app security front also? We saw only about the infrastructure. Okay. Yeah. Perfect. Yeah, so for the AW, uh, so as I just told, uh, all the tools support for multi-cloud. So in the case of Azure, let's go here. Okay. 
So you can see here, and this tool also support the Azure, also the AWS and the GCP. So for the Azure, I have the five, for the AWS and GCP, we don't have anything. So it's, you can also connect uh, this tool to the AWS and GCP resources using the API, and it will get all this same information, same finding for that. What's the question again? Yeah, yeah, so you can integrate easily with the, with the other cloud app provider as well. And app thing, yeah. So let me cover a few things for the app as well. So it's of course also support the app security, but app security is not from of the code, like as a, as a platform level. For example, we are using the is your app service or the or the functions. Then of course that will give other recommendation. But if you want to do the app sec at the code level, then of course we have to use some kind of different tool. And that mainly we using the CI CD pipelines, like we do all the kind of scanning there, or maybe someone can talk more about that app security. But let me first show how the app uh, we can do for uh, app thing here. So if you go to recommendations, and there must be something for app as well. Yeah, for the app is almost everything covered. Yeah, we can see here. So for this, the, we have the web app, a 15 web app, and they find that FTP should be required. So FTP, yes. So these are the vulnerabilities they find in all, all these web, web apps. But still, we are talking about the, the web app, but on the platform level, not at the code. Goes to other thing here. This is enable for the service if finding it. Okay, going back and again. So anything on the app, so can you explain my app check here or the, or the platform level things? Or maybe you can unmute yourself and you can talk. Uh, so, uh, what I believe for app is better to go with uh, traditional dash and slash approach. Uh, controlling app security through CSPM, uh, you you won't be getting that kind of control. Yeah, because because this tool is for the like the cloud visibility, visibility, yeah, like visibility and resources. Whatever resource we have in the cloud, it could be VM, it could be network, web apps, database for that things. But if you are talking about the code level, then of course, if you're using the CI CD pipelines to deploy the code again, then there's so many tools you can use there, like SolarWinds or some, sorry, what's the tool name, Suman? For the code scanning? Oops, white source bolt is there. Come yeah, on. yeah, 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 that you can use. I hope I answered your question. Yeah, so I think those were all the questions that we had. Uh, thank you, Suman and Sakaldeep, once again, and thank you all for your participation in today's webinar session. Thank you, everyone. Thank you. Thank you.